Hello guys, welcome back to another update video on my multiplayer project. If you're new here, this is my multiplayer game I'm working on. A first person action shooter game with multiple game modes that can be played in a variety of team sizes. Now that you know what I'm making, let's jump right into what I've worked on since the last update video. The first thing that I did was a UI overhaul. Before now, the UI was very simple and was just meant to be functional but visually temporary. Now I have overhauled all the main menu UI and some of the in-game menus to be more visually polished. The first thing that I did was choose a color palette to use. This way I would have colors that are known to look good when used together. I used the website Flat UI Colors and ended up choosing their Chinese color palette because I like the shades of grey and blue that it has. Next, I restyled all my UI to use a constant style. I also added some simple tween animations and sounds to the buttons. I added the low poly guy player character to the main menu. It spins and cycles between a few different animations. Lastly, I added some main menu music. This music was created by Galaxy X Beats specifically for my multiplayer game. So I want to thank them for making this music for me because I'm really not good at making music myself. Make sure to go check out Galaxy X Beats YouTube channel to listen to the full track and to check out the rest of their beats. I think the UI is definitely looking a lot more polished now and is less like a prototype. I'm sure it will change again in the future, but I personally like the new look so far. Feel free to let me know what you think below that like button. The next thing I did was a Firebase rework. As many of you know, I am using Firebase to handle my user authentication and database functionalities. Firebase is a platform developed by Google to provide backend tools for applications. Firebase has an SDK built specifically for Unity that makes using these tools fairly easy. I actually have two tutorials on my channel about how to use the Firebase authentication and real-time database. So go check them out if you're interested. But for my multiplayer game, the issue is that the Firebase SDK for Unity is really only intended for mobile apps, and as you know, my multiplayer game is currently only for desktop. The solution to this is to instead use REST which stands for Representational State Transfer. It's basically the standard way to send data using the HTTP protocol. I found a REST client library for Unity on GitHub and added it to my project. I then converted all my Firebase code to use the new REST architecture. I also made lots of little improvements to my Firebase systems, including adding the ability to send a password reset email. My Firebase implementation is overall much more stable now and should be more easily maintained and expanded upon in the future. The next thing I worked on was creating a custom launcher. Basically, I want an easy way for my players to access my game without having to download the latest version every time a new update comes out. I could use a popular game launcher like Steam or Epic Games, but I don't think I'm ready to take on that challenge yet. I'm sure I will in the future though. For now, I want to create my own auto updater slash patcher, I'm just going to call it my custom launcher. And for that I decided to use Electron. Electron is a free and open source software framework developed and maintained by GitHub. It allows for the development of desktop GUI applications using web technologies. There are lots of different frameworks to create a desktop application, but I had heard good things about Electron and I'm already familiar with web development, so I decided to give Electron a go. After many hours of learning Electron, I eventually ended up with the ZX Launcher. When you run the launcher, there are three scenarios that could happen. The first being if there is a new version of my multiplayer game, or if you have never launched my multiplayer game before, it will download the latest version of my multiplayer game and then launch it. The second being if my multiplayer game is already on the latest version, it will just launch straight into the game. And finally, if the launcher itself has a new version, it will update itself and then do one of the last two scenarios. So yeah, that is the ZX launcher. I think it's pretty cool, and it was pretty interesting to learn how Electron works and how to make my own custom launcher. The final thing I continued working on was client-side prediction. I mentioned client-side prediction at the end of my last video and the fact that I was working on it, but it was not working as intended yet. Since then I have gotten my client-side movement prediction to a not perfect but much more stable and playable state. Before I go further though, let me give a quick explanation of what exactly is client-side prediction. 
Client-side prediction is a technique used in video games that is intended to conceal high latency connections. I have implemented client-side movement prediction. Let's first look at a player movement example without client-side prediction. When you click the button to move your player forward, the input message to move the player has to be sent from the client's computer to the server. Then the server has to process this input message, move the player on the server, and then send the message with the player's new position back to the client's computer. Then the client moves on your screen. The issue is that there is a network delay between the server and the client, which means the player doesn't move on your screen until a split second after you press the button. And this only gets worse if you have a bad connection. Now let's look at a player movement example with client-side prediction. When you click the button to move your player forward, the input message to move the player is again sent to the server, but the client also moves the player locally with the same input. This is called movement prediction. The server then also processes this input message, moves the player on the server, and then sends a message with the player's correct position back to the client's computer. Then the client compares its predicted movement position with the correct server position. If they are the same, then the client predicted correctly and all is good. The hard part is when the client mispredicts for some reason, the client then needs to reconcile their position back to the correct server position, which basically is fixing the local movement position to be the correct authoritative server position. Okay, that's as far as I'm going to take my simplified explanation in this video, as I'm sure you can tell that client-side prediction is an advanced networking topic. So if you're more interested in learning about it, I'll leave some links below. What you're seeing right now is a bunch of the failures I had while implementing client-side prediction. As you can see, it can be pretty glitchy if it's not implemented correctly. This is how the movement is looking now. It feels a lot more responsive since the movement is being predicted and there is no input delay. There are still a few random jumps and jitters, but I hope to iron out the last few issues in the future. I'm interested to see how well or how bad it works in the next playtest. And once again, that's about it for this update video. Join the Discord server using the link below. Make sure to click on the playlist in the end card to watch all the previous and future update videos on my game. I hope you like this update video, and I hope to see you in my next one. Until then, thanks for watching, Zippy out.